Hi, this is Gary with MacMost.com. Let's take a look at some things about macOS that annoy some people and how to fix them. So here are a bunch of small features in macOS that may annoy you. Now note that every one of these has a reason for being there. So some of them you actually may find useful and like, while others may find annoying. For instance, this first one I find very annoying. If you click on the desktop, what happens is all of the windows move aside and you have access to whatever's on the desktop. Like if you add files and folders here, I rarely keep anything on the desktop and I don't really like this functionality. I often click on the desktop in order to bring the finder to the front. So how to get rid of this? Well, it's in system settings. If you go to desktop and dock, there's a setting here under desktop and stage manager for click wallpaper to reveal desktop. Switch it from always to only in stage manager. Now you can click on the desktop all you want and it selects the desktop, but doesn't clear the other windows away. And note that you can still clear the windows away if you want. If you go into keyboard and then go to keyboard shortcuts, click on mission control and it's called show desktop. If you have that turned on and set to something like F11 and you may need to use the globe or FN key in conjunction with that, depending on your settings, to clear things away. Now another annoying thing is that if you double click on the title bar, of a window like this pages window, it doesn't fill the screen. Notice there's still gaps on the left and right. What it actually does is it enlarges the window to be the largest size it needs to fit all the content and no larger. But you can change that to really make it fill the entire screen. The setting for that is in system settings and then back into desktop and dock. And then right here near the top, there's double click a windows title bar two. This is new in Sequoia. And zoom is the functionality where it gets just large enough, but fill means it goes to the entire size of the screen. So now when I double click here, you can see it fills the entire screen. There's still a bit of a gap. And that margin is the subject of my next annoyance. And that's using window tiling, you often get this margin here. So if I move say to the left here and tile this to the left, you can see there's still a pretty big margin here you can get rid of that with another setting. So that's also in desktop and dock. You can see here you've got tiled windows have margins. Turn that off. Now you could see that the window tiling resulted in it going to the very edge. So I can move this to say the right side and notice it fills the entire thing there. There's no margin. And if I double click here, it will fill like before, but the margin is gone there also. Now also another annoyance I've had people report is the whole idea of being able to drag to the edges like the left edge or the right edge or even the corner like that to position windows. Some people like it, others don't. They find that it's getting in the way of their normal movement. So you can turn that off as well in the same place. If you just switch off the drag windows to screen edges to tile, it won't do that anymore. So you notice now it doesn't try to tile here. By the way, if you find these videos valuable, consider joining the more than 2,000 others that support MacMost at Patreon. You get exclusive content, course discounts, and more. You can read about it at macmost.com slash Patreon. Now, some people often complain about the dock that it takes up too much space at the bottom of their screen. And it's easy to fix that in a variety of different ways. So if we go back into desktop and dock, and we look at dock here, first you've got size, so you can actually make it larger or smaller. You also can position it, say, on the right side of the screen or the left side of the screen, as well as the bottom. But you also have the option to automatically hide and show the dock. So the dock normally is gone unless you move your pointer down to the bottom and it pops up. Now, speaking of items in the dock, you've got this area here where there are three icons. These represent either apps you currently have open, but they're not on the left side, or apps you've recently had open. I kind of find this annoying. I'd rather have complete control of exactly what's in the dock at all times. You can turn this off with show suggested and recent apps in the dock, this setting right here, and now you can see that's gone. Now let's talk about windows in apps. Typically when you are in an app like this and you've got windows open, say a document here in pages, if you quit pages and then you launch it again, like that, it, reopens all of the windows with the documents in them that were open before. So quitting and then resuming, reopening the app brings everything back. I find this incredibly convenient and I love it.
But I know some other people are annoyed by this. They want quit to mean that everything gets closed and the next time they run the app, it starts fresh. Well, you can do this on a case-by-case -case basis by going to quit here. And notice if I hold the option key down, quit changes to quit and close all windows. So if I use this and now I relaunch pages, it relaunches without those windows. Now, if you rather have it behave that way every time, you can go into system settings here and then you can go to desktop and dock to this option here, close windows when quitting an application. If you turn that on, then it'll automatically close all the document windows when you quit an app. I'm often asked by people about the cursor color. You can see the blinking line right there in notes. Notice it's yellow in notes. But if I go to another app, like say I go to pages, then you could see the cursor is kind of this orange color. In reminders, you can see it's blue. So each app has its own specific accent color. And that's why you see this color here in notes. But you have control of this. If you go into system settings and then go to appearance, the accent color is the color that's used there. So right now it's set to multicolor, which means each app gets to choose its own color. So notes will choose yellow. But if I were to change it to say purple, then it overrides this for all apps. Now, if I go into notes, notice the cursor is purple. You also can choose a separate highlight color here. So right now purple is chosen and you can see purple is the highlight color in notes rather than yellow because I'm overriding it. But if I set it to multicolor and the accent color to be multicolor, it goes back to its normal yellow highlight and yellow cursor. Another thing people report as annoying, and I include myself here, is the caps lock key. It's too easy sometimes to accidentally press it and then you know everything you type is going to be in capital letters. If you just want to disable the caps lock key because you don't use it, then you can go to system settings and then go to keyboard and then look for keyboard shortcuts. Go to modifier keys and caps lock key can be turned to no action. Now, another thing people report as annoying is a new feature in Sequoia where if you have caps lock on, you get this little icon here indicating that you've got it on. This could be really useful and help prevent mistakes where you type a whole sentence in caps before you realize it. But some people find it annoying, especially if the work you do involves using the caps lock key a lot. So you can turn this off, but you're going to need a terminal command for this. This is the long terminal command, and you're going to have to enter your password afterwards, and it will disable this, but you have to log out and then lock back in to your account before it takes effect. I've got a whole video that deals specifically with this if you want more details. Now, big annoyance for a lot of people is all the notifications that you may get, both showing up on the right side of your screen and in addition to that, showing up in Notification Center over here. You can bring this under control by going to System Settings and then there's a whole section for notifications. And then they're listed here by app. So you wanna find the app that might be annoying you because you're getting too many notifications from it. Select that app and then you could decide whether or not notifications are allowed at all. And you could also decide how they appear. So you can have them here as alerts, banners, or not appear at all. Also in Safari, go to Safari and then settings and then go to websites and then look for notifications here. And here you're going to see any websites that you've allowed them to send you notifications. Sometimes they put up little permissions dialogues that kind of trick you or maybe you're in a rush and you click OK because you think it means something else. So you can look and see here all the websites that can send you notifications that will appear at the upper right. You can deny them or you can simply select and remove, which will reset it. And you can also turn off allow websites to ask for permission to send notifications to avoid accidentally agreeing to that in the future. Now, another type of annoying notification are these little numbers that appear over apps. You may have a bunch of different apps here that have little numbers over them, and they can be distracting when you're trying to be productive. You have control of these. These are called badges, and you can go into an app here. So that one was with reminders. We can go to reminders here, and you can find a badge application icon. If I turn that off, notice now there's no number there. So turn that off for any app that has a big red number there and you just don't care about it. And one last annoyance having to do with notifications. I find it annoying how the trackpad will sometimes bring up the notification center without me intending to do so. And it does that because I take two fingers and I'm trying to swipe across the trackpad, but I start too far to the right. 
If you go to the right edge of the trackpad and swipe with two fingers, it brings up Notification Center. And your intention may have been just to do a normal two finger drag. You just started over here. So you could turn that off by going into System Settings and then down to Trackpad. And it's under More Gestures, Notification Center. You just turn this off. And while you're there, you may want to check the other gestures because some of those might be annoyances as well if you're accidentally triggering them. Here are two annoyances in Safari. One is when you go to download a file, sometimes that file automatically opens. But all you wanted to do was just download it and have it in your Downloads folder. There's a setting for that. In Safari Settings, under General, you look for Open Save Files After Downloading. Also, when you click on a link, of course, it goes to that page. But if you Command click on it, then it will open up another tab. Notice how it jumped to that tab. But let's say I don't want that to happen. I want it to open up a new tab, but I want to continue with this page, and I'll get to the other tab later. Well, you've got settings for this in Safari Settings, and then look for Tabs. Now you can turn off when a new tab or window opens, make it active. Spotlight Search is very useful. You can search for things like files or use it to launch apps. And if you do a search for something pretty generic, you're going to find a really long list of things here. It can sometimes take a little while to generate all the results, and a lot of these you may not need. For instance, here it's showing me fonts. I never want fonts to appear in a spotlight search. If I want to look at fonts, I'll go to Font Book. So it could be really annoying to get too many things returned as a result here in Spotlight. You could control that in System Settings. There's a whole section here for Spotlight. You have all these boxes here that you can uncheck. So I can uncheck fonts, for instance. I can uncheck mail and messages. Uncheck as much as you like to make Spotlight more useful. Just include the things that you really want to use Spotlight for. I find it very useful to take a window full screen like this. And now it uses the entire screen, but the menu bar is gone. I can bring the menu bar back by moving the pointer to the top and it drops down. But I'd rather have it always be there. We well, have control of that in System Settings, and you're going to go to Control Center. And this is really about Control Center and the menu bar. So it's right here, automatically hide to show the menu bar. And you've got in full screen only, on desktop only, always or never. So I can set it to never, which means never hide the menu bar. So now when I go back to this space here, you can see the menu bar is always there. Now another annoyance has to do with when you have more than one display. So I've got two displays here, and I've got two different windows open on each. Let's say I want to take this Pages document full screen. If I click the green button to do that or use any other method to go full screen, look what happens to my other display. It goes blank. Well, what happened there? Why shouldn't I be able to see stuff on that other display? Go into System Settings, and then you go to Desktop and Dock, Go all the way down to the bottom, and there's a setting here called Displays Have Separate Spaces. So if you have this turned off, then both displays are treated as one space. That's great because it allows you to do things like this, where you have a window that stretches across two different displays. But it means that if you take an app full screen, it fills one of the displays and the other display is left blank. I find it much more useful to have displays have separate spaces turned on and use it this way. Now notice to switch, it requires a logout. So with displays have separate spaces turned on, I can no longer take this window and use it on another window. You can see it appears there kind of as a ghost. And if I drop it, it's not going to be on both windows. But now when I take this full screen, because displays have separate spaces, this can now display a space with a full screen app. And this display here has a regular window and it's got a regular desktop. It's treated as a separate space. And I can now work with two displays more efficiently. Another annoyance involves screenshots. I'm going to use Shift Command 5 to bring up all the screenshot controls here. And I'm going to click on this screen here to capture the entire screen. The thumbnail appears, and after that goes away, it will save to the desktop. Maybe there's a particular folder you want to save it to, or you want to choose where it goes each time. Let's bring up the controls again, Shift Command 5. And under Options, I can have it saved to any folder I want by choosing Other Location and selecting the folder. Or I can choose Preview, which will open the screenshot up in Preview immediately. And then I can save from there. So now I can take a screenshot like this. It opens up Preview. There it is. 
I can now work with it in preview. I can close it with a command W or click the red button there and delete. Or closing it also allows me to save it anywhere I want. I can also just use a quick command S to save it anywhere I want. So you can use preview as kind of your save as function for screenshots. And finally, I want to show you a small group of annoyances that appear in the Finder. And the Finder includes a few warning messages that could be annoying if you keep having to deal with them. For instance, I'm going to move this file out of iCloud Drive here to my home folder. So it's going to remove it from iCloud Drive, and this will give me a warning. I notice I've got do not ask again here, so I could easily turn that off. They're actually a group of three warnings like this, and you could find them by going to Finder and then Settings, and then go to Advanced, and you see these three checkboxes here. Show warning before changing an extension, show warning before removing from iCloud Drive, and show a warning before emptying the trash. If any of these three are annoying you, you can simply turn them off. So there are a bunch of ways to fix some annoyances you may have with using macOS. I hope you found this useful. Thanks for watching. If you liked this video, click the thumbs up button below to let me know. I publish new tutorials each weekday. Hit the subscribe button so you don't miss out.